Hello and welcome to Mentors at Your Benchside. I'm Ava Amson and today we're talking about an article called What the Heck? A Beginner's Guide to Heck 293 Cells. This article was originally written by Rebecca Roberts in January 2020 and it was updated in September 2021. If you're at all familiar with cell culture, you've probably heard of HEC293 cells. HEC293 cells are one of the most commonly used cell lines in laboratories across the globe. But what are they, and why should you use them? And what does a 293 mean? And are HEC293 T cells the same thing? Listen on for answers to these questions and more. So what are HEC293 cells? HEC293 cells are human embryonic kidney cells, originally isolated and grown by Dutch biologist Alex van der Epp in the early 1970s. They were transfected with seared adenovirus 5, AD5, DNA by Frank Graham, a postdoc in van der Epp's lab. It was his 293rd experiment, which is why they got the tag HEC293. Incorporating the adenoviral genes into the hex cell genome resulted in the cells becoming very efficient at producing high amounts of recombinant proteins from plasmid vectors carrying the CMV promoter region. So are HEC293 T cells the same thing? Not exactly. The T in the name of this daughter cell line comes from the incorporation of the SV40 large T antigen into the HEC293 genome. And this means that they're able to produce large amounts of protein from plasmid vectors carrying the SV40 origin of replication. So what's so great about HEC cells? There are many advantages of using HEC293 cells. They are a hardy, semi-adherent, low-maintenance cell line and divide rapidly, doubling about every 36 hours. They can be utilized for both transient and stable expression, they can be cultured in suspension or as a monolayer. They're easy to transfect and can be transfected by a variety of methods. And they're able to produce large amounts of recombinant proteins. Because of their advantages and versatility, they're the second most widely used cell line after HeLa cells, the first ever human cell line. HEC293 cells are used in cancer research, vaccine development, protein production, signal transduction and protein interaction studies, drug testing and receptor deorphanization, just to list a few. Now there are a few derivative cell lines. HEC293 cells have been used to create various derivative cell lines that have their particular uses. In the article on our website, you can find a table that summarizes some of the common HEC293 derivatives. Um, the table lists 293F, which is a fast-growing cell line that grows in suspension and is serum-free media. 293H, which is similar and also shows good adherence in plaque assays. 293T, which we already mentioned, has high transfectability and contains SV40T antigen. There's also 293FT, which is a derivative of the 293F cell line and also contains the SV40T antigen. And 293E or 293EBNA1, which expresses the EBNA1 protein. So how do you keep your HEC cells happy? The needs of HEC293 cells are pretty simple. Non-negotiables include a humidified incubator kept at 37 degrees Celsius with 5% CO2 and a diet of high glucose media such as Dolbeco's modified eagle medium or DMEM, supplemented with fetal bovine serum or FBS. Culturing media can also contain broad spectrum antibiotics such as penicillin streptomycin glutamine in order to prevent common bacterial infections but the use of antibiotics in routine cell culture can be detrimental to cells and results. As mentioned earlier, you can use a variety of methods to transfect HEC293 cells, so you have plenty of choice. You can even get specific HEC293 transfection kits with all the reagents you need included to make it super easy. Because they grow quite rapidly, you can pass it your HEC293 cells every couple of days. And the author mentions that in her lab, they typically pass it on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Similar to other cell lines, it's pretty standard procedure to split the cells when they are in log or growth phase, meaning that they're not quite 100% confluent. 
there can be some problems with HEC-293 cells. High reproducibility of results is an advantage of HEC-293 cells. However, if they are cultured for an extended period of time, their health degrades. This can affect growth rate and translation efficiency, so they tend to become less reliable in terms of experimental results. If your cell line has been in culture for more than 20 passages, it's best to thaw a new stock and start again. And here the author mentions that in their lab, they typically won't culture a cell line beyond 13 passages. One key disadvantage of using any human cell line is that there is a risk of contamination with human-specific viruses. This risk can be mitigated, but it's still an important consideration. Of course, the key to any successful cell culture is consistency and an excellent aseptic technique to avoid infection. However, even if you are an absolute cell culture wizard, you can't always avoid a mycoplasma infection. Mycoplasma can wreak havoc with your culture by affecting the health of cells, gene expression and downstream experimental results, so avoid it by testing regularly. The HEC293 cell line and its derivatives are incredibly useful in research and can be used for a variety of applications across different fields of research. If you need a cell line that can produce large amounts of recombinant proteins, or if you're a cell culture beginner looking for a low maintenance cell line, HEC293 might be for you. You can see all the references and links for this article in the show notes of this episode, and you can find the full article on the Bite Size Bio website.